Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV. I've been asked quite a few times how to reconnect or splice together a broken, chewing apart, or cut wire. So in this video, I'll be going over 10 different ways how you can go about doing so. Method number nine is my personal favorite, but please do let me know which method you prefer best. To splice wires together, you will first need a tool that can strip and crimp wires and connectors. Optimally, it's best to have a pair of pliers that can do both. It makes cutting, stripping, and crimping various size wires much, much easier. Simply find the size of your wire, match it with the number on the pliers, and stripping that wire will be a walk in the park. When you strip wires, after you bite into them, push the pliers with the thumb that is holding the wire instead of pulling on it with the pliers. There are also many different kinds of electrical crimp connectors, and these pliers can crimp them all. But if you're in a rush and don't have any pliers on you, it's okay. You can just strip the wires using a knife or even a pair of scissors. And before we begin our list, just a friendly reminder. Remember to turn the power off before touching any wires. Method number one. All you need is electrical tape. Start by stripping about half an inch of wire insulation from the wires that you will be connecting. Twist the bare ends together and fold them in half. Lastly, tape the connection real good and you are done. This method should only be done temporarily or for testing purposes. It wouldn't be a good idea to leave it like that permanently. Method number two is using a wire nut. This right here is an air conditioner low voltage cable. You just finished mowing the lawn and you are now happily weed whacking around the air conditioner. Next thing you know, the cable is cleanly cut in half. Oh snap. But don't worry, we can fix this. First, remove about an inch of the cable jacket. Be careful not to cut too deep and damage the insulation of the wires inside. Since most AC cables have two wires in them, a red and a white, I snipped the extra colors off for this example. Strip the ends of the wires and place the red wires together. Slide on a wire nut and twist until even the insulated part of the wires get twisted together. Pre-twisting the wire nuts before putting on the wire nut is optional, but according to the instructions, unnecessary. Now, we do the same thing with the white wires. If you notice that there is a bare wire peeking out past the wire nut, you can simply snip off the end of it. Twist on the second wire nut and the splicing is complete. It is always recommended to tape the connected section, so I went ahead and did just that. Number three is to use a closed end splice connector. This one is very easy. All you need to do is push the wires firmly into the connector and crimp it down. Give it a good tug to make sure the wires are in there securely and give it a round of tape as a nice finishing touch. Method four is Wago connectors. Many people like this method the most because of its locking tabs which make it very convenient to connect and disconnect wires quickly. Wago also sells transparent connectors that help confirm that the wires are fully inserted. Number five is push-in connectors. This one right here is very much like the transparent Wago connector I mentioned earlier, but without the little levers. All three slots are connected by a little metal bar, so it doesn't matter which slot the wires go into. Firmly push the wires in and the connection is complete. But don't forget to do the little tug test just in case. Method six is what I like to call an electrical coupling. You just need to push the wires in and you're done. It's almost like an electrical shark bite fitting, very easy to use. By the way, if you want to know the specific name of any of the connectors used in this video, there will be Amazon links to all of them in the video description. Method seven is crimp on butt connectors. These connectors have a metal tube inside of them that gets crimped down on the wires and holds them in place. Make sure the wires are crimped securely because loose connections can cause the wire to melt and burn. This right here is why it's a good idea to do a tug test every time. Normally, if this happens, you would use a new connector, but crimping it closer to the end did the trick for me. Method eight is waterproof butt connectors. These are like normal butt connectors, but they shrink when heated up, giving the final connection a nice waterproof seal. I think I may have roasted mine a bit too much, but it's probably passable. What do you think? Quick tip before we continue. If you are working with stranded wires, use your fingers to twist the strands together. That makes it a lot easier to work with. Method nine is heat shrink tubing. I like this one the most because it's the cleanest looking repair out of all of them. To begin with, slide the tube, or two of them, onto the wire. Then bend both bare wires into hooks and hook them onto each other. Next, 
Take the ends of the wires and wrap them around themselves. Now we are ready to slide on the heat shrink tube and apply the heat. Keep moving the flame to prevent the tubing from melting, but do make sure that the ends shrink completely to the wire to make a good watertight seal. As a finishing touch, I like to slide on an unused piece of tubing over the shriveled up piece to give it a nice fresh look. Number 10 is waterproof connectors. These are basically wire nuts that are filled with silicone. With this one, I do like to pre-twist my wires as it makes it easier to push them into the wire nut and get it started. In my opinion, this right here is the best waterproof connector. Since the bare wires are encased in silicone and some of it also gets squeezed outside of the wire nut preventing any water from getting in. If you have any other splicing methods that I forgot to mention or would like to share some tips of your own, I will see you in the comment section below. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, let me leave you with one final tip. Sleeping at work is something that never should be done. But if you absolutely have to do so, the best place to take a nap is under a ladder. Thank <laughs> you.